YouTube has always been a platform where you can post almost anything, you can say almost anything, and you can get away with almost anything. However, in this current day and age, misinformation is a plague worse than the current pandemic, and some content creators profit off the success of their intentional or unintentional ignorance. Today I will be talking about a certain small YouTuber who has been fast growing and relatively successful in her niche and why I think her content is more harmful than it is helpful. Retro Phantom, or otherwise known as Grace, is a fast growing YouTuber having started posting videos earlier this year, posting almost weekly since February with relative success. However, out of the 26 videos posted by her at the time of this recording, her top 12 popular videos only two of them do not contain the words fake, disorder, or TikTok in the title. Or some variant of the word such as fake, faking, lie, and disorder, illness. In fact, her second, third, fourth, sixth, and tenth most popular videos include all three that were listed previously. And her second, third, fourth most popular video also include the word cringe. So from face value, you can get what kind of person she is already. Watching her videos feels like an old Leafy is Here video and similar videos of the 2016 commentary channels disguised as bullying. Watching her videos led me to another channel by the name of Ablaze, or Doug, who posts similar content but has been doing it for six times as long, with half a million subscribers. Grace and Doug are dating, Doug himself even dipping into the fake disorder cringe based on the success of Grace's videos, her success being in view count and subscriber to viewer ratio which is currently not in Doug's favour. Now, Doug's content is quite interesting. For almost three years straight, he has created content focused against veganism, feminism, social justice warriors, transgenders, and anything remotely anti-conformist too. Often finding the most extreme radicals to hit the public, and then showcasing them as the average of the group. While there can be entertainment in the nature of a situation, when you put focus on a single person and make 18 videos of them, then by definition, you are attempting to make a career by harassing someone. And this is exactly what Grace and Doug have been doing. In fact, I'm not going to mention Doug again in this video. The rest of the video is almost entirely focused on Grace and her warfare of other people's mental illness. And even bringing up some insight in regard to mental disorders she's so adamantly against. The demographic that Grace seems to be taking a liking to attack is unique among their peers being the first generation to grow up solely on the internet. Boomers and the Gen X were the ones who created the internet, while Millennials and Zoomers are the ones who consume it. However, some of the older Millennials were not as fixated to the online world based on the limitations at the time. Zoomers, now equipped with some of the most powerful computers in their pockets, and with an entire range of human history at their fingertips. They are also the most stressed generation, with 3 out of 4 Zoomers saying that mass shootings are a significant source of stress, that 3 out of 5 say that deportation of migrant families are a significant source of stress, and just over 50% say that sexual harassment and assault are a significant source of stress. They are more likely to report their mental health as fear or lower, and are more likely to receive treatment and therapy from a professional. A 2018 study found that only 31% of teens describe the effects of social media as positive, while 24 say negative, leaving almost half of all teens to be unsure if social media is a good thing or a bad. Why is it that the most stressed generation, who are more focused on real world problems, are now being bullied by a 23 year old Canadian woman who refuses to believe that some of these people have mental disorders? Why? Why people with mental disorders, especially those who have ones that already have high stigmatization and are not fully understood yet, like dissociative identity disorder? Well, if you open up her about tab on her YouTube channel, you will see why in the form of channel views. Where we see 3 million views, she sees dollar signs. In the first video of hers to blow up, these kids think they're Tommy in it. She looks primarily at 5 people, the first 4 are Gen Zers with DID, followed by a commentary by Grace saying, you don't have DID, you're just talking to yourself, or the word this person's looking for is self love, not DID, in reference to a person with two alters who are dating. Which Grace, that's not how that works and that actually adds to the stigmatization. A very common behavior of any system is communication with other alters that they are aware of. A very common behavior of any system is communication with other alters once they are aware of each other. And often it will help with treatment and integration. 
and I couldn't find any medical papers on relationships with alters in the same system. I found a lot of forums talking about how it's not uncommon and generally accepted. I even interviewed many folks with DID and OSDD, all of them saying it's normal, accepted and valid. Just because you think it's fake doesn't mean it is. You need to state facts to why rather than saying I think it's fake but wrapped in a different format. In fact, a common argument Grace will use in order to attempt to disprove the validity of these people's illnesses is based on the fact that they're able to switch on video. Recently, she has made a post in regards to hiring editors, so maybe she just doesn't know you can cut a video to the right clip. Now, the last person she talked about didn't have DID. It was Tix and Roses, um, a notorious TikToker who faked Tourette's. Grace never said anything concrete in regards to facts, but alludes to the evidence that was piling up to Tix and Roses at the time, and weeks after she posted that video, a Reddit post was made describing the truth behind Tix and Roses. Now of course people do fake mental disorders for various different reasons, but usually for a game of some sort. But when people are caught, the backlash is so worse that all that was gained during that whole charade is not worth it. In regards to DID, at least 1.5% of the population is estimated to meet the criteria of DID, and anywhere between 2% and 14% have either fictitious or malingered DID. Just to show you how small these numbers are, 3 billion people use TikTok monthly, and 28% of TikTok users are under 18. This gives us 84 million people. I choose this number because it's the demographic Grace is attacking here. The number of TikTok users under 18 estimated to have DID is 12.5 million, and from that amount, anywhere between 250,000 and 1.7 million are estimated to either fake or exaggerate symptoms. Because there's no studies indicating the difference between fakers and those who exaggerate, let's assume 58% of them are fake, meaning that at most 800,000 kids using TikTok are lying about DID, and 120,000 people are at the low end of that number. This number will even get smaller when we just talk about people who post content. If we ignore the people who post content who have DID but don't talk about it, and if we ignore the small number of people who meet the criteria of DID but don't actually have it, and if we talk about kids from the western world who are the target of claims of faking it, and if we just talk about people intentionally lying rather than those unintentionally lying about DID. This number is so insignificantly small, we might as well cut the previous number in half once or twice. Many people often believe DID is fake or not real based on a few factors, such as the types of alters, the numbers of alters, switching time between alters, pronoun use and misuse, and whether or not there have been a formally a diagnosis or not. Grace definitely uses these to attempt to demoralize DID folk. Some alters, when described, do often feel as though they're cartoon characters more than personalities. However, an alter can come in any shape and size, sometimes in a form of real people, animals, or something non-human, although it's less common, but still valid and recognized. The number of alters is variable, but at least two is the minimum. It's recognized that hundreds can appear, but studies suggest that the average number of alters are between 10 and 24. In fact, Trudy Chase was a woman who wasn't aware of her disorder until 1979, but had 92 known personalities living within her based on her trauma. The speed of switches between alters can vary from person to person, but six different studies from 1988 to 2003 found that a switch usually happens between a few seconds and up to 30 seconds. Grace in one of her videos brings up how it's impossible to force a switch, despite it being known knowledge of multiple types of switches, including forced switches. Oftentimes, the recovery from disassociation is near instant too, which while studies suggest there was a recovery period, is not uncommon for it to be near instantaneous. People will call out people with DID who are inconsistent in using we, us, and I, me pronouns, Often it is clear by context how they are using these pronouns, and just because you have a few other people living on your head doesn't mean you must always use we, us. Oftentimes, because DID folk will tend to use neo pronouns, people will discredit their emotions and identity, which is a whole other problem that the trans and non-binary community face too. And ultimately too, sometimes we just slip up, 
Just because we make a mistake does not invalidate anything about ourselves. Most people with just one personality in their head will hiccup a lot. Imagine how hard it is to have two dozen personalities in your head. And lastly, getting a formal diagnosis is something that of an uphill battle. Despite Zoomers being more open about their mental health and reaching out in regards to improving it, most of these people are Americans under the age of 18, making the first step of the process incredibly difficult, and if able to get to the medical stages of the process, there's still an endless medical cost, making it more off-putting to pursue further. And while typically a patient diagnosed with DID is 30, it can still be diagnosed earlier, especially considering the onset symptoms start between ages 5 to 10. In regard to Grace's sources of content, her favourite subreddit appears to be r slash discord cringe, a subreddit created about a year ago where they make fun of people who they believe are faking disorders. Now, not all posts here are about making fun of people with disorders. The mod team adamantly defends the integrity for research and ensures you do research before you prove the clips are fake. And if you do post anything, you need to sufficiently provide that proof. Although in practice this just results in people saying that's not how X disorder works. With some disorders like Tourette's, Autism, OCD and ADHD, many of the subreddit users are well versed and because Tourette's and Autism are quite physical in nature, in regards to tics and stims, it's easier to compare a real person with the disorder to someone who is faking it, and prove it to be true. Some of the most popular of all time posts on the subreddit are about Tourette's and how to spot a faker. Autism is more driven by behaviours, as is OCD and ADHD. How you can tell if someone has it or not is based on the behaviours they display with a typical person who has it. However, while the due diligence was taken to identify those who do and don't have the disorders, the subreddit often ignores to do the slightest bit of research in regards to DID, and the major cause of DID is experiencing some form of extreme trauma during childhood, usually sexually or physically. Not everyone of childhood trauma has DID, but everyone of DID has childhood trauma. Some people online will give themselves the label of endogenetic dissociative identity disorder to describe themselves as having DID with no trauma, which is impossible and not DID, form of OSDD or just Munchausen syndrome, but it's not DID. Some symptoms and causes of Munchausen syndrome are shared with DID, but interestingly, DID is more common with young women, while Manhausen syndrome is more common with adult men. I only state this to disprove the notion that endogenetic disassociative identity disorder is the same as DID. I've stated earlier in this video also why people may think DID is fake and why I think they are wrong to assume that, especially considering the total number of fakers are no more than the urban population of Canada's capital. It seems almost everyone who has DID, diagnosed or not, is going to be labelled as a faker, and the only way to avoid being called out, whether it be true or not, is to just shut up. Now, while we are still a bit off track, I do want to dedicate this next part to why I think there's a growing trend to people with DID, as seeing more people with DID often is associated to why people think it's fake. If we assume there are no DID fakers at all, and we just talk about those no older than 25, we must then analyse the cause of the abuse they felt between the ages of 6 and 10 that led to the malformed personality. Or, in other words, what the hell happened between 2000 and 2010 that led to this abuse? The early 2000s were plagued with the constant war on terror, an increase in overly sexualised content on mainstream media and video games with a hyperfixation on violence. Now, while studies have shown that violence and sex in media are not significant within the increase of sex and violence related crimes, they have shown that those already susceptible to the crimes are more likely to commit them. But I mostly bring up what society was like at the time to give you an insight on the idea that in the 2000s, there was something to fight, or more specifically, something to dominate. And knowing this and comparing it to the typical desires and delusions of an abuser, and considering that in the United States 5% of children will be physically abused, and 1 in 5 girls will be sexually abused, while 1 in 20 boys will be, it is no wonder that a trend may be more visible with these factors addressed. Since 2000, the world population has risen by 1.8 billion people too, so numerically, of course you are more likely to see an increase of people with DID in general. And also, based on medical advancements, we are getting more accurate at describing conditions and also an increase in destigmatization 
will lead to people being more willing to open up about these conditions. Acceptance results in destigmatization, which in turn results into this openness. Now, I think it's best we return back to Grace. On November 11th, Grace livestreamed The Sims for just over an hour where she made a family of Sims with fake disorders and that night received a message if she felt guilty for disrespecting folk with mental disorders. We never got to see the message, but I more or less want to analyze the response that she made public on her Discord. Got a message today asking if I feel guilty about calling people out and decided to answer here. To the person who called me out, this disrespect coming into a server and immediately breaking the rules shows me that you aren't one to listen. But I think it's important that everyone be clear about my message. You can't feel guilty if you're aiming to do your best, to do the right thing. And my goal with the series of the channel is to stand up for those suffering with mental illnesses who have been affected by this TikTok trend of making light of serious disorders. Whether or not someone is faking is only half of it. Anyone who thinks they're glamorizing, stereotyping, and making light of mental illnesses or neuro disorder online is wrong. Mentally ill or not, you are responsible of your actions and cannot blame the illness on anything you do. It teaches kids that they can absolve themselves of responsibility with an easy pass that they will have to accept when others do it too, or else they must fear being ostracized and wrongly labeled as ableist for standing up for themselves or questioning the person. People also spread misinformation under the guise that they have the disorder, encourage fakers to spread the information themselves, which further stereotypes and re-stigmatizes disorders that people have spent years trying to normalize so that they can be seen as normal people. People who once were being accepted for their disorders are now being told that they're not legitimate because they don't act like the TikTok kids, or that they're told they're faking because of its trend. Being mentally ill sucks, and no one should want to make that some identity for attention. And no, not every kid who fakes it is mentally ill. A lot of kids want attention and are trying to fill the gaps while they begin to form their identities. Kids feel different when they hit puberty and their hormones out of whack. Sometimes it isn't a deeper meaning. My goal isn't to bully kids. If you listen to what I say, especially towards the end of each video, I worry about the consequences of faking of those who are actually suffering, those faking, and that I want to educate. I do it in a light-hearted way where I poke fun because it shows how ridiculous this faking is and because no one wants to be lectured. I would like to think that my Girl Scouts are subscribed to me because they understand my message and know my intentions are good. But in case you were confused, now you have a straight answer. Have a good day. 1. Since we never got to see the original message, we can't know the contents of it or if it was disrespectful or not. Although judging by the server rules, it could only be rule number two, don't be rude, which no one but Grace can verify. Two, is bullying people who you have no interpersonal relationships with the right thing to do? Three, you have not stood up for anyone. You've only been adamantly opposed to those people you believe are faking it. You are acting like judge, jury, and executioner. Four, you really provide proof for if someone is faking it, and you admit in the previous point you are making light of a serious disorder. Is it only right if you are the one doing it? 5. Firstly, some mental illnesses are out of your control, but you can still admit responsibility. And secondly, where is the proof that that second statement is remotely true? 6. As mentioned previously, about 0.2% to 0.03% of DID cases are likely to be fictitious or malingered. 7. At no point in your videos, Twitter posts, Instagram posts, Discord posts, or Facebook posts have you ever said this. This is the first time we have heard you say these words in that order. 8. This is the first time you've been sympathetic about TikTok kids and saying this in a video rather than a Discord post you forgot to add everyone in would do more good. 9. Even cases of people that were faking it, you've showed little proof and in regards to the end of your videos, you have said such things as people faking this will lose empathy from me. As soon as they stop faking it, the happier they'll be. I can guarantee that not following in the footsteps of these people will save you a whole lot of embarrassment. And if you seriously think that these kids don't use their mental illnesses as some sort of personality trait or identity label, then think again. 10. 
Your message has been to make constant fun of mental illnesses you claim to be fighting for while using 1960s rhetoric in regards to how these kids should pragmatically solve the problems of these illnesses. The only thing you have done is to write consult a professional if you have any questions concerning your own mental health under your rant against fake disorders in every description on your YouTube channel. It's safe to say that you have not been helping. What's most interesting in regards to these videos is in almost every mention of another mental disorder that isn't DID. She has claimed to done research, but as soon as DID comes up, there is no research done, which is weird since she is willing enough to research other illnesses. She has been open a few times about her own, although never explicit on what disorders. Except for in her fan art channel on Discord, where there's a reference sheet lies for her OC. Almost all the information matches Grace personally, and if those mental illnesses on the list are true, and firstly, I'm sorry you had to go through some of that. But secondly, but because you went through some of that, you should at least be more aware in regards to other people's mental health now, and more so. Since you've also listed the four agreements under your life philosophy, you should maybe revise agreement number three. Don't make assumptions, as currently this has been a six month trip of bullying people who do not deserve it. But finally, if those mental illnesses listed on your character sheet are not illnesses you've gone through and just there for fun, then what the fuck are you doing faking an illness?